This is going to be a long video, isn't it? Hey everybody, what's up? Today I decided to do something a little bit different than usual. And that is that I wanted to involve you guys in a video, so I decided to go to the most rational, amazing place on the internet. Twitter! To ask for your hot takes on Undertale and Deltarune. And if this video seems like I'm not talking into a script and seems a little bit uh, messy in places, that's because this is completely unscripted. I haven't written any kind of script because I'm lazy and needed to get a video out. Love you guys, by the way. I despise Alfie. She does horrific war crime experiments on people, doesn't let them free, and constantly endangers a child because she wants to be special. And she gets the happy ending with the hot fish girlfriend. Okay, this is just wrong. This is just a factually incorrect take. I know it is steaming hot because people kind of like Alfie's for the most part. And there's a lot of people who don't like Alfie's. They find her annoying. And like, I get that. But this is like not really accurate. This is definitely taken out of context in a lot of places. Um, as for endangering somebody uh, to make them feel special, you were never actually in any real danger from Alfie's. Uh, if you ever actually take damage to the lasers in Hotland, uh, she turns them off if you get a uh, hit to 1 HP by them. They are incapable of killing you. The only danger you're actually ever in comes from Metaton himself. It doesn't actually ever come from Alfie's. Uh, she will turn off any puzzles that are too dangerous or have the ability to do damage to you um, if you reach a certain point. So, like, you know, she did still do the whole fake thing, which I get is, like, morally questionable. The whole, like, oh, I'm actually helping you thing, but she never really had the intent to actually harm you, I don't think. So, I, I get not liking her as a character or thinking she gets off a little easy. I, I do understand that uh, mentality for sure, though. Asgore absorbing the human souls in genocide could have added so much to his character and been an emotionally scene. Uh, genuinely emotional scene. I get why Toby chose Sans to be the final boss, but still. I don't agree with this. Um, I actually think the way they handled it in the game was perfect. Um, Asgore talks about absorbing the human souls, but he, he doesn't want to. It would go against his character to do it. Because at the end of the day, he doesn't want to. He has never wanted this. He said he wanted it because he was angry and stuff after his kids died. But he, he's not the type of guy to do this. And he basically stalls all of the time he has in order to not do this. Like, the reason he doesn't absorb the souls is because everybody's already dead. And it's cowardly, and he is. That's part of his character. Asgore is not a very... They like, can be a cowardly person. That is part of his character. And I think it actually adds a lot of depth to his character that he didn't absorb the souls like you would expect. You kind of expect him to be like this big imposing final boss and then you realize, wow, he is just like, he is so far gone that he is just chill and, and doesn't even like raise a finger to try to fight you. Birdly is a good character. That is a steaming hot take because some people really hate Birdly, I've noticed. Um, I like Birdly a lot, actually. I think Birdly is a cool character. Uh, you know, a lot of people think he's annoying and I get that. If you, if you don't like his humor, then you don't like his humor. But he's, he's harmless at the end of the day. Uh, I think I think he's a total dweeb and a total dork, but I do like him. He's got a lot of endearing, and I I really enjoy, uh, hypothetically, I do enjoy doing uh, his voice acting. It's very fun. Um, hot take. People have the wrong idea about your choices don't matter thesis of Deltarune. It's being presented in a similar manner to In This World, It's Kill or Be Killed in Undertale, a thesis that you can aim to prove or disprove depending on your actions and ethos. Absolutely correct. 100% on the mark. I've been trying to tell this to people for so long. They just assume that because the game says something at the beginning, it has to be that way. Even though we in Chapter 2 literally do get to influence certain outcomes with choices. Like... I'm not sure why people just attach themselves to the whole your choices don't matter in this world thing. As if it's some sort of un, like unflinching, unwavering con uh, constant. Which it's not. It, it isn't. The whole point of Undertale was proving Flowey wrong and he was the first person we ever really talked to. So whoever told us that, you know, in this world your choices don't matter, maybe the game will be about proving them wrong. With everything that has been added slash improved in Deltarune, Undertale just feels empty and somewhat boring as a result. Also, random encounters suck. I hated them in Undertale. I much prefer how Deltarune encounters are handled. Long story short, Deltarune is a better game. I completely agree. I think that Deltarune mechanically is a much better game than Undertale is and has the potential to just 
be such a vast jump. Uh, right now, I think the only thing that's holding Deltarune back is a little bit of lack of variety in battles, but I think we're going to get that, especially if they start reintroducing the soul colors and stuff like that in future uh, boss fights or story sequences. Um, in terms of gameplay, though, it, it has a lot more depth. Um... Equipables that actually matter, accessories that actually matter, different characters, um, all, all sorts of different stuff that just, it has the potential to be far, far ahead of Undertale in terms of its gameplay complexity. But that's sort of the point of Undertale is that it is really simple. Undertale is, is just as complex as it needs to be for its runtime, in my opinion. It's only like a six hour long game, um, six or seven hours on your first playthrough, and... It does enough to get you through that, not much more. If the game was longer, I think you'd be start complaining about the systems in the game. But um, yeah, I do think Deltarune will be a better game. In terms of its story and stuff, that's obviously completely subjective and depends on what you like. All Undertale tracks are great, but Enemy Approaching is probably one of the weakest in the OST. I like Enemy Approaching. It's a good little battle theme, but I will agree that I think Rude Buster is much better. Um, enemy Approaching is like... It's okay. It's a decent, like, generic battle theme, but I pretty much prefer every other battle theme more. So, I can I can actually agree with that. I think that it is one of the weaker tracks in the soundtrack. Of course, the weakest Undertale soundtrack is, like, a B-grade track from any other soundtrack. So, th there's not really any bad music in Undertale. Field of Hopes and Dreams is kind of mid. How does it feel to just be completely and utterly wrong? Does it, does it feel good to just wake up in the morning, go on to Twitter.com, and be like, I am going to be completely and utterly wrong and a foolish, stupid idiot today? How does it feel? Must suck. Chris is Frisk Deltarune, kind of like how Susie is Susie Undertale. I could see this, yeah. Um, it's mostly just speculation and stuff, but I absolutely could see them going this way. The games aren't allowed to have mysteries and unexplained things that aren't Gaster or Kara, and the fandom's insistence that they're behind every tiny thing is completely diluted what char little character they already had. I completely agree with this, actually. This is a hot take, but I definitely agree with this. People are way, way too trigger-happy to look at anything slightly mysterious or slightly different in the games and be like, It's it's these two guys! It's, it's these two guys! It always is! Um... Yeah, I really wish that people would allow more creative uh, freedom when it comes to when it comes to like mysteries for different things. Uh, a lot of people really just want to connect everything to Gaster, and like there are things in the games that can be separated from him. It doesn't all have to be tied into him. There there can be things that are just unexplained mysteries. It doesn't all have to be one thing. I think people should get more creative with their fan theories, is what I'm saying. All right, we have a double one here. I feel like the genocide route could have been better in Undertale. Looking back at it, it feels like a grind fest with only two real fights. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed these fights. I just feel like it's so much effort for little in return. I don't know how else to phrase it. And we also have a reply to this take uh, that had about an equal amount of likes that says, That's the point. It's to discourage the player from doing it and to make them seem even more psychotic for taking their time to kill every single thing in an area. It's genius. So... I have a lot to say about this. I've been actually kind of waiting for a good excuse because I did bring up my opinion on the Undertale genocide route on Twitter one time. And of course, it got bombarded with a bunch of like 15 year old kids all saying, you media illiterate, how dare you criticize something as if I don't have like infinity more hours than all of them combined. But anyway, the genocide route in Undertale, yes, the point of it is that it is objectively less fun to play than pacifist because the whole point is that it's using games in a medium that isn't usually used in like with a movie you know you're just watching the movie with the, with a game you have the opportunity to make a player feel things by what they're playing and undertale decides to make genocide boring um it goes out of its way to try to make it slower less engaging and something you really have to go out of your way to do. And it really wants to reinforce home the whole point of like, well, you're willingly doing this to yourself, right? At the same time, this is a video game that people paid money to play. And there are objectively two really cool, especially Sans, two really cool boss fights locked behind the genocide route. 
that force players to play through that if they want to experience probably the best designed fight in the entire franchise in Sans. I think that ultimately that goes against the, the, the point of it all, and you can't fault somebody for finding Genocide to be a little bit boring when they want to get to the Sans fight and play it, because people play video games for a myriad of different reasons. A lot of times if anybody ever speaks up or says, well, I thought this part was a little bit boring. People will say, well, that's the point. That's the point. That's the point. That's the point. Just because that's the point doesn't mean they have to like it. Okay? That is something I feel like this fan base has a terrible tendency of not grasping is that people don't have to like that thing that is being given to them or the point of that thing. Media ultimately is down to who interprets it while they're playing it. And if somebody didn't exactly like what the game was going for just because they wanted to experience everything that a game had to offer, which is something that I feel is a pretty valid way to play video games. You go into it with the mindset of, okay, I want to see what everything this game has to offer. And you go out of your way to not only call them a piece of shit and a terrible person in the game, but also punish them by making it less fun to play, while at the same time also having arguably one of the coolest moments locked behind all of that. That, I do think that is a flaw of the game. And I love Undertale, I do. I love this game to pieces, obviously. But I do think that is something that I have a small issue with. And I think the creator of Undertale, Toby Fox, also might have had an issue with it. Because if you look at how they handled the weird route in Deltarune, that is seemingly fixed. They they re-contextualized a similar thing to kind of carry over all the emotions like that you shouldn't be doing this, you're bad for doing this, holy shit, look at what you're doing to these characters, while also still keeping it somewhat engaging to play by instead of, you know, sitting there and walking in circles for three minutes until Jerry decides to show up, um, you go and actively explore the map, hunting down every little last monster that starts, you know, they start running away from you and stuff. It, it keeps it engaging while also still keeping what makes it special in my opinion which is like the game and the deconstruction of what it is to play an rpg and grind and stuff i do think that there's merit to it as well though geno has like that magical moment when you uh when you first play it without knowing that it's in the game mind you and you're like grinding all the kills and ruins just to see what happens and you see and notice it gets longer and longer and things start to get weird and that first time you see the but nobody came it's like that's a big standout moment I think that maybe the rest of the game, or at least Snowden and Waterfall and the first session of Hotland, um, that section maybe could have done with a little bit of a speed up to how fast encounters produce. Which is what we do in speedruns, by the way. We exploit a game mechanic in order to get encounters faster um, than you would by just standing in one room. Which makes it a lot more well-paced, in my opinion. So I feel like it's almost there. Like, it just goes just a little bit too far into the, this is, you know, you shouldn't have fun playing this. I know I'm kind of rambling at this point, but I just had a lot to say on it. And I wanted to put it in a place where I feel that I don't have any sort of, like, you know, misunderstandings about what I'm talking about. Or, or I won't get bombarded by people saying, well, you're just media illiterate. That's the point, and you don't understand it. It's like, I know that's the point. I've played the game more than you have, but... <laughs> I will never understand how these games acquired a vocal contention of people that are homophobic, and my only guess as to why is because they got into it because of how popularized the Sans fight became. I read all of my YouTube comments. Um, I know, crazy, right? 140,000 subscribers and he reads everything he posts, but... I think this issue is actually a little bit more overblown because you start, you, you focus on like the one or two negative things. I will say, like, 99% of my comments are completely fine. You get, like, that 1% of people that, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. How in the world are there homophobic Undertale fans? That just doesn't make any sense. In order to get the best ending in the game, you literally have to get a lesbian couple together. <laughs> like, like, that is just bizarre. It is strange. I don't know how they got into the game or why they are still part of the like fan base for the game despite the fact that the game flies in the face of their views it's very strange but i do think that like the you know oh this fandom is filled with this kind of stuff is really overblown because it's not the vast majority of undertale fans are really sweet kind people um it's just like that tiny little section that you got to work uh look out for for sure
People are making the identity of the knight a way more important plot point than it probably will be. Yeah, um, I think that, you know, people are kind of going into this whole, like, almost murder mystery style of thing. Where it's like, ooh, the whole point of Deltarune is going to be that one of our friends is secretly the knight and we're going to have to figure out who it is. Like, it's, like it's Scooby-Doo. Um, no. I think that the knight character is just going to introduce themselves as, like... You know, as the knight. Personally, from everything that we've been shown, I still think it's going to be Alvin. And, like, I feel like the moment he shows up in the Dark World, it's going to be like, hey, guys. <laughs> like, it, like, it won't be... The identity of it won't be a big, like, plot point in Deltarune. It'll be him, his character himself, that will be the important part of it. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it's, like, this big murder mystery thing. I think it, that's how it's going to play out. So, I agree with that. Mad Mew Mew is adorable and should be added to the main game. Something I really like that they did uh, in the Xbox version is that they specifically state in a line of dialogue that regardless of the fact that you didn't play the Switch version, uh, Mad Dummy will always turn into Mad Mew Mew in every timeline. That always happens. It just doesn't happen on screen in the PC version because they hadn't programmed it in yet. Uh, I love Mad Mew Mew. I'm glad she's in like all of the uh, all of the Deltarune like newsletters and stuff. I'm glad they've kind of latched onto her because she's a cool character, and I think a better character than Mad Dummy too. I, I like I like the transition they did into her um, because I, I think she her design is pretty standout. Muffet was way underused for a character with their own soul type in battle. Who's Muffet? Uh, not sure who you're talking about. Jokes aside, I uh, I do think the Purple Soul is underused, and I'd love to see it return in Deltarune. Neutral Route is probably one of the best things in Undertale, and I wish more people let others do their first playthrough without interference instead of telling them about the true pacifist ending. It lessens the impact of many scenes like Sansa's judgment and other consequences. Absolutely 100% correct. Without Shadow of a doubt. This is probably the take I agree with the strongest out of all of these so far. 100%. The neutral route has so much merit to it and people don't view it the same as Pacifist or Geno. A lot of times when somebody's playing Undertale for the first time, somebody will ask them, well, are you doing Pacifist or Genocide? As if they're the only two options. Neutral is such a gigantic part of this game and is such a pivotal part of first playthroughs. Please, if your friends are playing the game for the first time and don't know anything, do not ask them if they're playing Pacifist or Genos. Just let them play. Part of the magic, and I got to play this game back in 2015 before it blew up, part of the magic was figuring this stuff out yourself and finding out that there even are different endings that you can get. There's so many neutral endings that are like really stand out. Like the one where Sans leaves to go live with Toriel. Or the one where Metaton takes over and turns the underground into a capitalist utopia. And Papyrus and Sans are like his like men in black agents. Or like the one where Sans tells you to go to hell and all that. There's so many cool neutral endings and people just breeze over them. It's such an important part of the game, I feel like. There's a lot of stuff in the neutral route that's the gets overlooked because everyone focuses on Pacifist and Geno. Uh, reactions to killing Papyrus and Metaton, etc. And it's a real shame because they add so much to the world. Again, yeah, just expanding on that. So much dialogue and stuff changes depending on who you kill. Like, if you kill Papyrus, the game is almost completely different. Because Sans doesn't show up at all. He has completely different dialogue in the Judgment Hall. Like, Undyne is all freaked out when she sees you. Like, bro, Papyrus missed training. I know he doesn't do that. What did you do to him? Like, there's so many cool interactions and stuff. Let people play the game and make their choices and find out themselves that Pacifist or Geno exists. That's part of the magic of the game. And I feel like that's been diluted, unfortunately. And I really wish we could get back to that point again. Just because a plot point or twist is obvious doesn't mean it won't happen. And of course, Toby doesn't seem like the type to change a plot beat just because the fandom caught onto it and guesses it quickly. People saying Gaster won't matter kind of confuses me. Whether or not Gaster is going to play a major role uh, doesn't really affect the first part of this, in my opinion. But I agree that a lot of people think just because something seems obvious or it's the obvious choice means they can't go with it. Um, no, things are obvious because they make sense in plots. Like, yeah, it's, it's guessable, but it makes the most sense. That's why you guessed it, right? Um, another thing with Deltarune is that unlike Undertale, it wasn't delivered to us as one package. It was dropped in chapters and stuff. Keep in mind, the story of this game 
was basically done before Chapter 1 was released. Like, the, the general sketch of the story was done before Chapter 1 was released. And the way it was going to be originally was that Chapter 1 was just going to basically serve as the demo, and then the rest was originally all going to come out as one package, but then we've moved on to the release schedule that we have nowadays. So it was never supposed to be like an episodic release. That wasn't the original structure of the story. So it's not like, you know, the original intended experience was that you'd play them all and you wouldn't have years between chapters to guess what happens next, you know, and formulate big, deep theories or whatever. I, I think that people uh, disregard obvious things, right? And, uh, you know, you should keep your, keep your mind open to those as well. I agree with that. The Ruins is the worst place in the entire series, and it doesn't do a good job setting up the rest of the game, at least visually. Nothing wows me about Ruins, but I guess that's the point of it. It doesn't really work for me. Kind of a weak opening area to a game I love. Ruins is the weakest Undertale area. I do agree with that. And not just because I'm a speedrunner, right? But also, it is visually the least interesting. Especially emotionally the least interesting, I feel like. Basically, the Toriel fight is the only thing that really happens there that's memorable. Uh... I can't really describe it when I was first playing through the game, though. When I got to Snowden is when I was like, okay, this game is serious business. And I need to play this, the rest of it, all the way through. There was something emotionally resonant about Snowden that I just didn't really get in Ruins. So I, I kind of agree with that. It doesn't do a great job at, like, hooking you in. The benefit is, is that it's incredibly short. So you don't necessarily, it's not like a 60 hour RPG that you really need to get hooked into to go all the way through. It's like, you, you'll get to Snowden in like um, an hour at the most. <laughs> Fanon's interpretation of the Sans genocide fight is just the undying, undying the undying in canon. Yeah, so a lot of people will draw up these like big spectacular animations with like Kara and Sans or Frisk and Sans or whatever, all the whatever characters you decide to use in your fan works are like duking it out in this Dragon Ball Z style fight when that's just the Undyne fight. That's actually what happens in canon in that fight where you have two characters going at it in like crazy like over the top anime fashion. Um, the Sans fight I feel like would be much more methodical uh, in, in, in reality because that's kind of what it is, right? It's like a, it's like trial and error. <laughs> but that, that is a funny thing to think about for sure. Sans is not Tumblr sexy man material. Absolutely incorrect. Terrible take. Fuck off. Awful. Terrible. Worthless take. Awful. How dare you say that about my favorite Tumblr sexy man. The Snowgrave slash Weird Route in Deltarune is more compelling and demoralizing than the Jenner Route in Undertale. I've seen a lot of people say this. Um, personally, I don't actually agree with this. I found the complete isolation that you get from Geno to be really spooky. Like... That game is gets real spooky. Um, I think, though, it is a valid take because with Deltarune's um, weird route, you have to force somebody else to do these things. In Undertale, you can kind of disconnect yourself from the character you're playing as because they don't say anything. They don't talk to anybody. You can disconnect yourself. But with Deltarune, you actively have to see the consequences your actions have on a character that people really like. Which is genius, by the way. A really cool way of doing it, especially for people who played Undertale, because it, it means that it's not just the same thing again. Now we're getting it recontextualized, which is really cool. So Sorry is a genuinely funny and fun boss fight, and it's a shame that people only know him from the really big quotes controversy. Uh, yeah. I actually, um, I ran, I, I did So Sorry on uh, April, October 10th, and I forgot that the fight is actually pretty fun. For the most part, anyway. Uh, the attack variety is not there, but that's to be expected from an extra fight. But but the jokes were funny. I, I liked them. Uh, I think that people do, you know, it's kind of a bit in my community, like, to be like, ah, So Sorry, or, but... People do overly hate on them because of the real world life inspiration, which you can completely ignore. This is absolutely a situation where you can 100% detach the art from the artist because this is just somebody who donated money for a character in a game. Like, sure, I know that they draw subject matter that isn't exactly everybody's cup of tea, but at the end of the day, are they actually really doing any harm? No. Uh, getting upset about it or saying, oh, why would Toby do this, sir? I have to cancel him now or whatever. That's ridiculous. That's silly. No reason to do that. 
just because somebody draws something that you don't find to be attractive or whatever. And, and like, I get that. If you don't, if you're not into that, you're not into it. If you, if you even kind of look at it and you're like, Ugh. I get it. But like, it's, it's also harmless. Keep that in mind. Spampton is kind of annoying. I get why people like him, but I wish there were cooler characters to highlight. Damn, fellow content creator Galaxy really said that about Spampton Deltarune, the funniest character of all time. Nah, uh, I remember uh, Toby did a playtest of Deltarune where one of the playtesters was like, I don't really like this character that much. And Toby was concerned, like, are people going to like Spampton? Because I like Spampton. It's a certain style. And if you don't like it, you're going to be like, I don't get it. But... I do like the wacky, zany, random things that he does. You know, every once in a while, that can be fun. Um, if he's annoying, he's annoying, but I don't agree with this. Bad hot take. Bad. I like the character. Fuck you. <clears throat> Undyne is underwritten. She has the least stuff going on when you compare her to the rest of the main cast. Susie and Noelle's romance needs to be developed better. Noelle talks about Susie in almost every scene, and it's easily the most annoying part of chapter two. I like the romance, but I feel it'll play out like a watered-down version of Alfine, which is the Alfie's undying relationship. I wouldn't I wouldn't like a go back in time and get a better ending plot in Deltarune because that's what Undertale was all about. I don't want the same game again. Oh, lastly, if you hate Flabby, you don't understand Undertale. Hey, I said one hot take. Jeez. Jeez. Can you all read? No. Um, I actually agree uh, with pretty much all of this. I do think Undyne is the least written of the main characters and we'll get to this in a second because i have another take lined up here um and we'll go into undyne in just a second so let's cover the other thing Susie and noel this will get developed i'm pretty confident that this will be better developed as as deltarune goes along because right now we're still in the initiation stages of in, in the introductory stages to like their characters and stuff i i think that as the game progresses their relationship will more naturally mesh together because i do think they're gonna have a relationship at some point it's it's too strongly implied and i don't think toby would back out of that that just doesn't seem like something they would do there's there's too much implication already um as for go back in time and get a better ending i don't think that's going to happen what i do think might happen is that every ending of deltarune will be the same in that there will be some sort of event that happens regardless of what you do that just causes something to happen um and I think that's how they're going to maintain that whole, like, only one ending thing. Because, okay, take this hypothetical, for instance. Say a character is born, and 40 years from then, a bomb activates in the center of the Earth, and everybody dies. There's no way to turn the bomb off, and nobody knows about it. In that scenario, there is only one ending. It doesn't matter what that person does with their life. They could be the CEO of the most powerful company in the world. They could be a mass murderer. It could be a, an amazing philanthropologist that helps everybody. Doesn't matter. Shit, everything's going to blow up in 40 years, right? So that, that you, you could maintain that whole one ending thing uh, while still having all sorts of choice and player action and stuff. I think that might, they might go that route. I'm not sure. Uh, as for hating Flowey, you don't understand Undertale. Flowey's an awesome villain. I love Flowey as a villain. He, he, he basically embodies everything the game is about. And I don't know how you can really dislike him. He hams it up, too. She's my favorite character in anything ever, but I think Undyne has the worst backstory from Undertale's main cast. Everyone else is interesting, but hers is just, yeah, I trained since I was a kid to beat up humans under Asgore. What else? Where the fuck are your parents? This is what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, Undyne doesn't really have a backstory. She, her main character progression is, er, I don't like humans, too. Ah, uh, I like humans. Or, some humans are okay, I guess, to quote her directly. Uh, I do think she kind of got snubbed in the backstory de uh, department. Because, like, you know, Alfie's has this whole thing with her character progression and development. And, you know, that's a big part of the game. Uh, obviously, Sans has so much lore packed behind him. Papyrus sort of shares in that, too. And, hell, Papyrus's lore might get expanded by Deltarune. Undyne was just kind of there. And, uh, you know, I'd love to see the adventures of teenage Undyne as she goes around and beats up bad guys. My hot take is that several hot takes in this reply thread are wrong. Absolutely. If we look at the original tweet I made, you'll notice that there were 348 replies and I only chose about 20 or so. And it's because all of them fucking sucked ass. 
These were terrible. You guys have some awful hot takes. <laughs>